And let us continue with our session on in, how to interpret antimicrobial sensitivity testing. We have learned about MSS and breakpoints. We have learned about how breakpoints are determined. Breakpoints are determined from a uh, first step for uh, the cutoff value, then we apply uh, in the second step we apply PKPD, and in the third step we apply the clinical studies and analysis. And the, uh, then the breakpoints are determined. Let us understand how evidence cutoff value are derived then. Evidence cutoff value is abbreviated as ECV or ECOF. They are the measures of a drug MIC distribution that separate the bacterial populations of MICs into those representative of wild type that is with no resistance mechanism and those with acquired or mutational resistance mechanism that is non-wild type. Repeat again, the, the epigenetic cutoff the, the, the divides the MIC populations into either wild type that is with no resistance mechanism and non-wild type with inherited resistance mechanisms. The wild type are defined by epigenetic cutoff value that isolates with no resistance mechanism or reduce susceptibility. But non-wild type with, with, are with mechanism of resistance. Here we consider the population almost all wild type, with 95% of the population being wild type. The, e the ECOF is less than uh, 0.125. The ECOF is 0.125. So the, e the CLSI breakpoint is 1 and ECOF is breakpoint 2. So the ECOF might be very less than the CLS and ECOF, and wherein, wherein we get only to know about the resistance mechanism are present or absent. There are softwares which are available wherein the MIS is plotted or uh, entered into the software can help us to understand the breakpoints and uh, eco values. Now, how is, uh, what are the guidance for interpretation of eco values? Eco values, uh, say for example, for the MSS values, the MSS we have eco values. All the MSS which are less than the eco values are in the, in the interpreted as a uh, wild type, and the, and the MSS which are more than the eco values are interpreted as non wild type. That is with no res with resistance mechanism and no resistance mechanisms. Similar is for a disc, the disc diameter. The clear zones of inhibition, if it's more than the ECOP, then it is wild type. The clear zones of inhibitions, uh, if it is less than the ECOP, then it is interpreted as non wild type. So, wild type and non wild type will help us only to understand whether there is a resistance mechanism present or absent. Wild type has no resistance mechanism, while non wild type has a resistance mechanism. For example, let's say an example of azithromycin against cigarette Azithromycin, the ECOP value for wild type is less than it, and non wild type it is more than 16. So if the MIC would have been 4, it would have been interpreted as wild type, that is no resistance mechanism. If the MIC would have been 16 or 32, it would have been interpreted as non-wild type, that is with resistance mechanism. If the ECOF help us to understand only whether the particular MIC is a wild type or non-wild type, that is with resistance mechanism or without no resistance. So ECOF should not be used when breakpoints are already available. It is only a predictor of resistance mechanism as either present or absent for a particular antibiotic against a particular or So just because an isolate is wild type, therefore it has no resistance mechanism, doesn't mean that the concentration are adequate or the PKPD has been made. Conversely, if the isolate is non-wild type, does not mean that it is a resistance mechanism, so does not, the, does not meet the PKPD. So therefore, the need to make certain that labs do not report or imply that ECV predicts clinical response, otherwise patients may be harmed. So a culture sensitive report only tells, up, tells you whether, uh, whether about the identification of bacteria and fungi and the sensitive results. It does not tell you about whether it is an infection, contamination, or condensation. Sensitive testing is an in vitro phenomena and doesn't necessarily reflect the in vivo efficacy. Sensitive testing is subject to great variability depending on the culture media use, the pathogen detected, the conditions of incubation and inoculations, and other systems. Let us now understand how to interpret sensitive testing using a case study. An exposed patient was admitted to a nursing home with fever, sits, and coughing. He was diagnosed as pneumonia and depending and sent for to, add, uh, to the microbiology lab for identification and sensitive testing. The organism identified was about clebsin and pneumonia, and the sensitive result. All the antibiotics were resistant except cholestin, which is intermediate, and set as an which is sensitive. The lab reports indicated the patient is infected with clebsilla and sensitive only to cholestin, set as an Taking into consideration that the issues related to cholestin in ICU setting, so, such as it's a pentacin to lung pain and chema, it's no, non aerobic uh, of any uniform dosage formula. The patient was then considering the issues with the, the cholesterol, such as nephrotoxicity, urotoxicity, vasotoxicity. The patient was started on septazidine, ivacuum. Now, consider another case with, with such a sensitive report. All the antibodies are sensitive, and only one is resistant. Now, which antibodies will It depends upon the rules. Rules, uh, rules one said that always start with a better time antibiotic possible, especially in severe inpatient, because you have the best data supporting the use, except. 
number two, do not compare the MSS because every antibody has different serum concentration, concentration, different thermocantics. Each antibody has a different uh, pharmacodynamic parameters such as time dependent antibodies, concentration dependent antibodies, and others. So do not compare the MSS between. If the, if, if the MSS is less than the breakpoint, you can uh, you can use the drug. But except if the drug doesn't get to the site of action, drug doesn't actually use PKPD, drug doesn't have uh, in natural resistance, patient specific factors limit the use of the drug, and drug costs. Then rule number four is microbial service has more information than what is reported. So they may have the results more than they what is reported in the computer. So the clinicians or the healthcare provider can refer to the microbiology lab for any further information. So that for, uh, can you just understand uh, 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 to a case study, an example, uh, how to interpret a sensitive thing? Uh, blood culture related into cocos fecalis, and we do it with all the antibodies sensitive. Now, which antibodies will you start? Always uh, rule number one, start with the beta data. Which, uh, our choice will be ampicillin. Uh, there are other choices like daptomycin and vancomycin also. But still, ampicillin will be the drug of choice by rule number two. That is, do not compare the MSS. If we, uh, then rule number three, you can use the drug with some exception. However, still, uh, ampicillin will be preferred than one core daptomycin. Then macrobiology always has more information that is reported. So you can test from the macrobiology lab, test sensitivity a little bit also. This is the only oral option. But still, ampicillin will be the drug of choice considering during the cost effectiveness of the Take another example to understand how to interpret sensitive testing. Urine culture uh, irritated clips of the which is AES will producer. Now, the, 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 the uh, sensitivity report is as follows. Uh, uh, more, uh, most of the antibodies were resistant except C418, which are sensitive to Mirapinam, which are sensitive to Tigisacrine, was sensitive to Leoflox, which is sensitive to Nitrofenacin, was sensitive to Peptides, was intermediate. Now, which antibodies will you say? So, also, you need to have more information whether the patient has cystitis or viral nephritis, if cystitis, whether it is male or female, if female, then how old? Let's assume that this case is a female with cystitis with no comorbid condition. Then another, another thing, you want to have is IV or oral. So understanding the four rules, that is always start with the beta lactam, do not compare MISs, have uh, considered the exceptions and uh, approach macrobiology. Based on these rules, macrobid, that is natural front end, was selected. Why? Because, uh, though, because being an producer the uh, superspirates were not, and beta lactam and uh, superspirates they were not selected and nitrofurantin became a very cost effective drug it was used for the treatment now let us understand the guidelines for therapeutic decisions in any case the results of a sensory testing needs to be interpreted with some background knowledge on the biology of the organism and the patient history do not use the antimicrobials if they are not necessary always take into account the natural resistance and possible resistance which are not always expressed in vitro testing Check for any unusual results. The patient history is very important. The underlying disease, the previous treatments. Then the drug choice needs to take into account the drug properties, the distribution for predicting efficacy. Dosage adjustment should be precise. Whenever possible, use the narrow spectrum antibiotic and critical critically important drugs for human cases in exceptional cases. Then we have rapid diagnostic tests. That was about the world about the sensory testing. Then we have also rapid diagnostic tests like biomarkers, WBC, ESR, CRP, lactate, procalcitonin, gram stains, and molecular tests. So this is a rapid diagnostic. I will be using four hours of the sample collections and testings. If you see the procalcitonin, which is the biomarker for uh, uh, sepsis and other uh, uh, infections, if the procalcitonin is less than 0.1 units, then bacterial infection is very unlikely. If it is more than 0.5, bacterial infection is very likely. So, when it is very unlikely, we can cannot, we could skip the antimicrobial usage. Consider we put the procalcitonin after 26 to 24 hours based on the clinical conditions. But if, when the bacterial infection is very likely, we can start the antimicrobials. Consider stop antibiotics when 80 to 90 percent decrease. If the procalcitonin re remains higher, considering the treatment. So that is about the procalcitonin and the biomarkers. The genotype sensory testings uh, for uh, are effective in microbiology uh, for interpretation of the microbiology reports. Uh, they are the direct methods that eliminate the tedious bacterial cultures, long incubations, genesis of con contamination, and the spreading of deadly infections. PCR, DNA microarray, DNA chips, and loop mediated isothermal amplification, that is LAN, are some of the genotypic methods used for the detection of antibiotic resistance. The rapid detection of the recent genes within few hours is possible that helps in making decisions to use more specific antimicrobial agents rather than broad spectrum therapy. We have molecular and rapid diagnostic tests available such as rapid biochemical identification, protein amyl cell identification, rapid identification pathogens from blood cultures such as microarrays, fish, then rapid phenotypic sensitivity testing, then NAC detection with nucleic acid amplification detection, 
for judicial resistance in such as MECA, VAN-A, VAN-B, and KCP. So that was, that, that was about the rapid diagnosis test. We have PCR panels in current use such as respiratory panel, GI panel, blood culture panel, meningitis panels, and lower respiratory the swabs are used to collect the specimens and it is a uh, then it is then then testing is transported uh, uh, medium liquid is prepared into the reaction container barcode scanned reaction container placed into the instrument and we there is get the result within 20 minutes uh, uh, by nucleic acid antibodies test of influenza a b respiratory sensitive virus group a streptococcus and covid 19. let, uh, let us let us uh, summarize about the rapid diagnostics advantages they, 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 they needs to be there needs to be appropriate indication and specimen collection is critical for both macrobiology and newer diagnosis no rapid diagnostic platform meets all the needs selected the rapid diagnosis based on workflow and patient population rapid diagnosis can decrease the diagnostic uncertainty to be very effective rapid diagnostics have to be actionable and tied to local stewardship program monitor for the unintended consequences testing must be correlated with overall clinical condition of the patient conclude Antimicrobial stewardship use the right drug at the right time and at the right dose for the right duration. While diagnostic stewardship is often the right test in the right patient in order to use the right drug at the right time at the right dose for the right duration. That's all. I leave up with the message. Use antibiotics responsibly.